What is up then boys, FIFA Raw is the name, FIFA is the game, and welcome back to today's video, which is going to be another episode, episode 2 in fact, of 11k for 11 gems versus Russo's uh, budget builders. Uh, before I let Russo introduce himself, I'm just going to say, if anyone wants to uh, leave us any feedback on how we can improve these videos, uh, that feedback shall be more than welcomed. We are aware this video will be quite a long one, coming in at about 14 minutes. So uh, thank you very much if you are prepared to sit through that, and uh, please drop a like if you could. But uh, yes, I shall now let Russo introduce himself. Hey guys, what's going on? Russo here bringing you guys another commentary with Sam as he did mention before. And as you guys are looking, you do see my team up here uh, on the screen. And we added some new borders and everything like that. So just like Sam said, leave us some feedback. We are wide open to anything. We're going to try to cut down uh, the video time in the future. But uh, as you guys saw, we had Archer Marais and that was pretty much Sam's uh, nightmare at goalkeeper. Nothing could basically get by that guy. And, uh, you know, he was just an absolute monster in the goal. And then we're moving up to our first center back. We do have Philippe Santana, who's just an absolute beast, guys. And uh, I will have to say in this episode, Sam's team did play much better than mine. So when we do get to Sam's team, we will highlight some of his players and uh, how well that they did play against me. Because I definitely do believe that his team was the uh, better of the two when it did come to this episode. And, uh, yeah, you touched on Arto or Arto Marais. He was absolutely incredible, honestly. Um, sometimes I play against keepers that, that are that, 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 that stop everything, but he was just, honestly, I hated playing against him. Um, I found, well, all respect to you, I found your team rather easy to play against, especially to get through the midfield. But the number of times Arto just completely saved you was ridiculous. Honestly, I don't ever want to play against him again. I, I mean, I completely agree. Um, you know, I just kind of... I was throwing this team together, and I just kind of realized that basically the whole back five is Brazilian, and basically the whole uh, front is basically Switzerland when we do get to that. there's I believe there's three Swiss players, and then there's a few other Serie A players when we get to the top. So uh, I did play a 4 4 one, 1 which is a little bit of a hard formation to do, typically because if you think about it, it's just a more narrow 4-4-2. Uh, but in the 4-4-2, you have the two strikers, and they can pass the ball within each other. But this one, it really does rely on the center forward being in the right position at the right time, and... And I don't think the striker in the center forward for me played as best as they could. Um, but nonetheless, I think my defense was pretty solid. Um, I chose two pretty solid center backs, as you guys can see, in Miranda and Santana. Like uh, Sam was mentioning, the, the midfield wasn't that great. It was mainly for more chemistry purposes uh, to just kind of get through the game and uh, to just kind of go with the flow here and, uh, you know, get some really good solid midfielders in there, but they didn't play as well as I thought they were going to. So, uh, but nonetheless, guys, I, I thought my team played okay. Uh, but once we do get to Sam's team, his was a beast. And like we were mentioning about Archer Marais, guys, go out and try him he is I think he was under a thousand coins if not a thousand coins evenly and this guy's an absolute monster he's over six feet tall he's huge in the goal and just made some absolutely ridiculous saves yeah uh, moving oh not moving on a little bit you mentioned your center forward uh, your front two even though people won't know who they are yet really some incredibly hyped players and uh, you really found they didn't live up to those hype or to that hype they didn't look particularly special to me at all when I played against them I found them pretty easy to defend against especially considering uh one of my three center backs let's say wasn't the best center backs and uh oh, well doesn't have the best of stats but uh he coached with them too very easily but um yeah yeah i mean uh the striker and center forward i mean i'll just give it away guys i do have muriel up top at the striker position and we do have el sharari uh up at the center forward who was a silver in last fifa much more hyped in last fifa which is basically why he's getting the hype this fifa but nonetheless playing extremely well in real life right now uh did not play too well for my team so if i was managing uh, milan in real life he probably wouldn't be the stellar star there like he is right now but uh nonetheless i wanted to try a little bit of different everybody always talks about el Sha. uh he was downgraded to four-star skills, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I do try to skill against Sam a little bit because this is just friendly matches, guys. So uh, we kind of play for fun. Trying to get the best clips for you guys. Trying to show you guys some, you know, underrated players if we do find some. And uh, I definitely do believe Sam did find some underrated players, or at least some players that I'm going to try to incorporate into some of my squads now uh, because some of them were absolutely amazing. Now, the man on the screen, uh, funny enough, Zerdan Shakiri, guys, we both had him on our team. Not going to, 
you know, spoil Sam's team for him uh, nonetheless. But Shakiri did not live up to at least my expectations. Um, I'll let Sam touch on him a little bit. I think Shakiri would have played much better for, further up the pitch because he is a pacier striker. And uh, just the way Ultimate Team works, pace is a, a very important thing. So uh, usually the mids don't do too much for me in my um, formations, especially in the 4 4 one The center forward and the striker basically uh, stole all the goals or the amount of goals that I did have. Um, as you saw, Zuniga, I believe, at the left mid didn't even get one goal. Um, I did not like him at all. I would not recommend him uh, in all honesty because when I was playing against Sam, guys, he ran out of steam very quickly. Uh, I believe within the, you know, within the game before the first half even ended, he was less than halfway down on his energy bar and uh, he was just so tired and basically was useless on the pitch. Did not show anything at all and uh, I was not very fond of him. So we have El Shaw up on the screen, guys. Four-star weak foot, four-star skill moves. Very much of a beast player. He's a 76 overall rated center forward. Uh, but he had some very good goals, but I thought he would have played much better than he actually did. And uh, Yeah, going back to uh, Zuniga a little bit, and you mentioned how he was out, out, out of energy half the time. Um, I believe Shaqiri also has high, high work rates. And uh, as you said, I didn't find him that effective at a right mid at all. Um, I feel he would have been a better right wing or a right forward, despite the fact his work rates are high, high. So he will trap back a little bit. Um, I just feel he was completely wasted at right mid, didn't get into the game too much, and what a goal that is. What oh, that, a goal. that was the best goal I think that any of us scored. I was screaming, guys, uh, when we were in there, and I had to throw a little bit of a replay, and I know it adds to the video link, but look at that chip. Sam's goalie was just, I don't know what he was. He was pretty puzzled, though. I can't remember who my goalie was now. Um, <laughs> I'll remember it in a second. But uh, yeah, he was, anyway, my goalie, nowhere near as good as yours was, honestly. I, I still can't get over how good Artur was, and I might have to try him out at some point, actually, because he was incredible. Yeah, um, I mean, funny enough, when you guys do get, uh, we're going on to the last person in my team, guys. We're playing the striker. Uh, I do have Pato there, which is the older one as of now. He did get his transfer card into PAX, uh, which would be actually interesting. But that's a whole different topic for another video. But we do have Luis Muriel, guys. Uh, 91 pace beast up at the striker, and I felt, I don't know, I felt some handicap with him. I mean, Sam maybe can speak on this because he was playing against him, uh, but, you know, he just did not play as he normally does. I mean, when I first used him in one of my teams, uh, this guy was just absolutely unstoppable. Nobody could stop him. He was just unbelievable. Really nice 90th minute goal to beat Sam right there with Muriel. Take a bow, son. Uh, he will do that. But, um, actually, Sam could have used Arthur Marais as well, but he chose a different goalie uh, from the Liga Portuguesa, who, like you mentioned, was not that good. But I think he is more of a household name uh, for people to know. Yeah, I just remembered who it is actually, and um, I will bring him up when I get onto my team. But uh, yeah, you you, you mentioned uh, Muriel, and um, considering the worst of my centre backs was the central centre back as well, that kind of gives away what formation I'm playing, uh, the sweaty three five two. But um, he really had no real trouble with Muriel, and I feel that's because uh, Muriel didn't have a chance to really run at the defence. A lot of the time he was on the defence's uh, last shoulder, and I think I did pretty well when it came. To uh, cutting out the three balls from El Shawari and uh, your two midfielders. Of course, by playing 3 5 2, I had the two defensive midfielders that allow to slot in at the centre forward spot and really stop El Shawari, uh, Inlet, and Badami from uh, dictating the play. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to uh, touch on a clip that just actually uh, went by. I believe it was two or three goals ago with Muriel. If you guys go ahead and take a look back at that, basically you just saw what the 4-4-1-1 ultimately is and how it is laid out on the pitch. You guys can see that the striker is lone up top. You play about five midfielders. The center forward does not really get forward too often, and then the and then the backs obviously play back towards the goalie. So it's a little bit more difficult playing the 4-4-1-1 formation just simply due to the fact that you do only have that one striker up top. You really really got to spread wide. You have to have better wingers than I did in my team. And uh, since Sam's team is starting up, let's go ahead and let him talk about uh, his absolutely monster team. And uh, Yeah, this was the keeper, uh, Rui, pa pa Patricio, uh, Rui Patricio, sorry, the sporting keeper. And um, he wasn't as good as Artur. I could have, in fact, got Artur in his uh, team because he would have got a uh, nine chemistry with Chan Dao as well. But uh, he wasn't as good as Artur, as I mentioned, but he was still a decent enough keeper. A good shot stopper, but didn't have the best reactions. Uh, I have Jerome, uh, Jerome Boateng at right centre back. Um, really good overpowered centre back in this game. Somewhat reminiscent of a Dede in that he is fast, tall, and very, very strong. Uh, Chandao, the uh, central centre back that I mentioned, not got the best of stats, fairly slow. 
and uh, it doesn't have a, thing, a single stat over 80 there. People will know him, of course, from scoring that back heel against Man City in the Europa League last year, which I believe eliminated them at some point. But uh, he, being so tall, he was a bit of a threat from corners, and um, he did uh, score a couple of headers for me. Um, a, a decent player, in fact, one I actually quite enjoyed using, considering I wasn't sure about how good he was be, uh, would be. And uh, the other centre-back I went for was the... Um, Frenchman Mangala and uh, people know all about this guy from last year as well a very overpowered defender really with this team with the 3-5-2 I went for a little bit of a sweaty overpowered team as uh, I didn't have too much of a good episode in the first episode I didn't enjoy the team so I just wanted to build a bit of a monster team and one that I knew would win games yeah I mean uh, Mangala it has to be one of my favorite players I just I do I, I'm not connecting why he's only worth like 700 coins. People must just not play with him because not only, I mean, he is, uh, you know, in a little bit of a lower league in the Portuguese league that's not very used, but he is French. And uh, you see people building French squads all the time because the French stars are amazing. You can have Benzema up there, Nasri. Uh, you know, the list can just go on and on and on. And Mangala is constantly left out of there, especially, uh, you know, Sako as well. Sako and Mangala in the backfield on a French team, it's just absolutely unstoppable. I believe 75 pace on Sako. He stands about 6'4". Mangala is nearly the same, which is absolutely incredible. But um, just want to touch on Jan Dao. So basically, um, as you guys saw, I believe Jan Dao had 53 pace and 78 defense. Um, just want to kind of touch on slower center backs. Now, Sam's actually played very well, surprisingly. Um, well, it was not very surprising to me. Slower center backs... That being in, so... <laughs> no, no, no. Like, he played very well because... <laughs> You know, in this game, Ultimate Team, basically, this, not the script, but, uh, you know, just the code is that they have to be fast. Um, that's just bo the bottom yeah. line. No matter how skilled they are, Ultimate Team is all about the pace. Uh, but basically, slower center backs, especially in this 3-5-2 formation, Sam was very smart about doing this. But normally, they have really high defense when they're slower, um, and they're actually very good players. And Zhen Dao actually played very well. Well, I uh, bought the two defensive midfielders as well, really, to cover him. I bought two fairly fast defensive midfielders in Luis Gustavo and Fernando from Porto to uh, cover the back three, and they did a really good job of that. I know they frustrated you a lot because they really cut out everything in that midfield. But, uh, yes, keeping on the pace topic, I did go for two pacey right and left mids. I had a Shaqiri at right mid, who we've already touched, uh, touched on, and uh, Ola John at a left mid, a player who I had fairly high hopes for looking at his stats. 90 pace, a fairly tall player with a uh, good shooting and such, but the star of my team was, uh, without doubt, Danilo Diaz. Oh. Honestly, I, I'd heard stuff about him. When I picked him up, I was amazed by how incredible he was. Uh, for such a low-rated player, a 79 overall player, I believe I paid something like 500, 600 coins for him. He was wonderful. Four-star skills, uh, 84 pace, good shooting, good passing, good dribbling, and you really didn't like him at all, did you? Oh, I loved him. I didn't love playing against him, uh, but he was <laughs> amazing, guys. This guy is an absolute gem, and I, I do believe he's Brazilian, right? Yep, okay. he's Brazilian. So, I mean, you guys can put him up there in a 4-2-3-1, somewhere with a Cam, even spend a little extra coins and put him at a center mid, although I do believe Cam is more attacking than the center mids. But definitely go ahead and check this man out. He is a beast. Danilo Diaz, guys, when we do go back in the team, he is the Cam on Sam's 3-5-2 team. And uh, touching back on the 3-5-2 as well, it is very hard to, uh, you know, dispose the middle with that squad uh, because there is two CDMs, and his played absolutely amazing. And, uh, yeah, the final two players, the two strikers, we had Jackson Martinez from uh, Porto and Rodrigo from Benfica. Both four-star skillers, both relatively pacey, over 80 pace, both really good low-rated players. And uh, I have used Rodrigo in a past episode of 11K for 11 Gems. He was by far my favourite of the two. Shooting on his left foot is absolutely monstrous. I wasn't too much of a fan of Jackson Martinez, of course, a massively hyped player in real life, but... Uh, I found Rodrigo to be so much better. He scored a nice goal for me here. He sits up on the volley and lashes it into the bottom corner. That was beautiful. But uh, all in all, I think you still managed to win more games than me. But uh, I think we can both agree that my team played better. And uh, if it weren't for your keeper, even then making a wonder save, uh, I probably would have uh, won the majority of the matches. No disrespect to you, of course. Oh, I mean, I definitely agree. 3-5-2 is a very good formation. Very hard to play against. And uh, I really, truly enjoyed doing this with Sam, guys. So this is what our ending of the video is going to be like. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this. Uh, so up in the upper left, that is my uh, subscription for YouTube. Up in the upper right is Sam's. Make sure you guys go check out both of them. Uh, two great YouTubers doing some great things. So thank you very much, Sam, for doing this with me. Hopefully, we can continue this. And uh, thank you just for doing it. Yeah, goodbye, lads. Goodbye. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thank you for watching. Drop a like if you guys did enjoy. Until next time, this is Sam and Russo, and uh, have a good one, guys.
look like